Welcome back to Same But Different, the movie talk show that nobody asked for, but we're doing anyway. My name's Derek, this is Brody, and we're here in awesome August, kicking off our reviews with the top movies made of all time. And the movie we're reviewing this week is Lawrence of Arabia, a heavy hitter right off the hop. I was surprised to see this is 98th on the top 100. The movies this month are all from the top 100, and Lawrence of Arabia mm-hmm. is way further down that list than I would have thought, because I've always just heard this is one of the best movies ever made. As have I. And then looking through reviews afterwards on Letterboxd and IMDb, people think this is just like the perfect movie. So let's get into our review personally. Brody, you want to take it away? Sure. First of all, in terms of the story, it's such an interesting side of history that I've I've truly never seen portrayed in anything. It's certainly not written in our history books growing up or anything like that. The only thing I can ever say I've seen this in is The Mummy. The Mummy wasn't about the war, the politics. It was just a subplot of The Mummy. But that's the only time I've ever seen this sort of side of World War One. If not anything else, this movie educated me in a really interesting way. So I appreciate it for that, absolutely. The movie makes you think. Can this man do these impossible feats? Does leading the Arabs to freedom truly make us safer? There's so many layers to this movie and to review it is really hard because I feel like you can review it from any angle because there's it's so multifaceted. But to answer the first question, can this man do all these impossible feats? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, he can. But, you know, not without personal and subconscious turmoil, obviously. And the second question, does leading the Arabs to to freedom make, make the world a safer place, I suppose, is kind of what the film leaves you with. I think that's the point. That's the ambiguity of it all. It's the takeaway, and I love how it's told from the very beginning. You see Peter O'Toole, you see Lawrence die at the very beginning, and at his funeral, everyone thinks different things about him. They either didn't know him, they either loved him, they either hated him, and I really, truly think that's a gigantic foreshadow for how you're supposed to interpret this movie and Lawrence however you want. It's also very important to note that that's just a bunch of British white people at the beginning, too, with their opinions. Like, we don't get the other side of it at all until we watch the movie. It set itself up for success and then just continued to be really really smart and and interesting all of the characters were amazing i think lawrence peter or tool holy moly (laughs) this movie was 61 years ago and it is some of the best acting i might have ever seen he was so genuine and charismatic and captivating and beautifully portrayed the that tiny little line between madness and heroism like all the characters were amazing and poor gasim i know (laughs) what a what a moment man that moment and that actually sent chills through my spine and that was i think his best five second acting in the entire movie when he was yeah. like I'll do this because I'm the man now and he he got the gun ready and he saw it was Gasim and you saw his face oh my god and then he just did it anyway oh yeah oh. yeah that was a that was a crazy moment and 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 any movie I've seen that was up there it aged so well a lot of movies about this content even though going back 10 years don't age well nothing about this was problematic it was just history well the brown face okay but. sorry yes okay <laughs> Okay, yes, you are absolutely right. Not nothing about this movie was problematic. The dialogue was amazing. It felt very natural all of the time. Little sprinklings of humor, and the humor, in my opinion, always landed. There wasn't one joke where I was like, eh. It was always funny and nuanced. Pretty much on the same page. True story, which is out of the gate, not my cup of tea in general. Like, I've seen a bunch of movies that are true stories that are fantastic. It just doesn't check my box when I'm walking into a movie that it's a true story. I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm going to watch a true story. Whatever happens, happens. Albeit a little embellished. I think it dragged on. I think there were a lot of moments in the story where it could have been shortened and the story wouldn't have suffered. I think the first half of the movie, the first two hours, I should say, was better than the second half of the movie. The second half of the movie just was too politics heavy for me and so much political talk colonialism and all this stuff not to say that wasn't in the first half but it was too heavy-handed in the second half the first half had more of the adventure more of the character growth more of the sweeping shots of the land and beautiful things yeah so the first half was way better characters were amazing everyone did a fantastic job my favorite specifically was uh, Shuri Feli he was incredible and he was such a good foil for Peter O'Toole Lawrence Um, and their chemistry together was incredible. Even the British officers who were sitting in a room just chatting, 
each of them had their own very distinct voice and all had a very distinct characteristic to them and it was incredible to watch that all come together alex guinness just did what alex guinness did best and played a wise old man is the original um, obi-wan yeah 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 it was really cool to see him i'll be in in the brown face but <laughs> in that era to be expected i guess but he killed it he really did but let's not ever do that again <laughs> yeah alec <laughs> lawrence was a likable character for the most part i think his character was incredible for the like i said first half of the movie very likable very funny sarcastic hero he had a very interesting arc where the more power he got and the more he became enveloped with these people his mental state started to deteriorate it was nice seeing a flawed hero especially in the 60s 40s 50s 60s were is such a golden age for like this is your poster man yeah and this is the hero and it was really interesting and unique to see a flawed hero in this flawed and also like flamboyant I thought was really, really yes. cool to see. Uh, that is not your, t- and so many like men air quotes consider mm-hmm. this the best movie ever and the yeah. main character is so flamboyant and that's just not something you get in the 60s and i think it's really really cool i just felt that sometimes again in the latter half of the movie the consistency of that story arc wavered it wasn't a consistent descent into madness and i think i guess you could make the argument that you could come in and out of it but it just felt weird that at one point he was charging into battle because he was stark raving mad with bloodthirst and then the next moment he was like a super calm diplomat and like guys oh, peace and all that it was just weird in that regard and and i didn't really i didn't really get that let's move on to the directing and the cinematography of this film brody what'd you think lean the director had a very specific and almost magnum opus vision for this movie you can tell mm-hmm. he knew exactly what he wanted this movie to look like and to feel like lord jiminy <laughs> <laughs> Did it work? A vast, empty land with so much loud silence. I don't know how to explain it. Like, it felt so big and, like, you're out there with everybody, but it's so alone. Obviously, while there is an overall overarching story here with Lawrence and everything that's going on, which is fascinating in and of itself, I think Lean painted such a beautiful picture of man versus nature alongside the, the main oh. subplot of man versus man. It was juxtaposing and almost, like, alarming at times, but purposefully shining testament to a good director if you ask me the cinematography was the best and worst part of this movie oh worst part well i'm interested no sorry cinematography camera work editing what you said earlier while the cinematography was grand and sweeping and beautiful sometimes Mm -hmm. the scenes went on for like 19 times too long it's like Mm -hmm. look at this beautiful sunrise keep looking are you watching Wow, it's it's <laughs> it's it's gonna be good, man. I was like, okay, this is gorgeous. Move on, please. I think this is the mo- the movie was too long specifically because of that. What I kept going back to in my mind was the fact that Lord of the Rings does this, right? Lord of the Rings gives you sweeping shots of them just walking along the mountain or whatever, but it only lasts for ten seconds. <laughs> we don't get yeah, we don't get them walking for a minute or two just across a giant field or something like that. This might be because we're millennials and we have our attention spans are not as good as maybe the people who watched this in the 60s but lord of the rings mm-hmm. at least does drone shots and cuts to other angles of this and it, it, yes while they're yeah. climbing up a mountain for two minutes you're, you're seeing different this one was just stagnant um, park the camera yeah. yeah park the camera and and go and that is where it lost a lot of its uh momentum for me yeah it's unfortunate because i think they were just that's just a product of the times right like they don't have the option to fly a camera over a desert that's what i meant by it was the best and worst part of the movie i didn't mean specifically the shots were bad because they were beautiful i was amazed by the technicalities of this 61 year old movie i can't i will not get over that and you're right about the attention spans too because like people in the theaters in the 60s when they get a shot like that like him blowing up the match in the sunrise they would probably just sit there in awe for so long and that's okay to have that scene or that shot that long because people are still recovering from what they just watched yeah everything the colors the scenes The vast landscapes, everything was incredible. A lot of the editing decisions, blowing out the match, and there were a couple of editing scenes where, like, the camels were walking, and then it it faded into the soldiers walking. Like, it was really cool, like, match cuts like that. Yeah. The composition was incredible. Whenever you had more than three people in a scene, the wide shot of somebody in the foreground, middle ground, background, spread across the image, it was perfectly executed. Whether it could have been a camel off to the left-hand side, Lawrence in the middle third and then somebody off to the right like it just looked 
so intentional and so placed perfectly. There's a term, and I'm sure you've heard this, every shot a painting. Finally, before we get to our ratings, let's just talk about the music and the sound. It was what you would expect from an epic. It had its own theme that'll stick in my head, that'll always be, I'll always be like, oh, that's the Lawrence of Arabia theme. Like, you know, much like mm -hmm. anything that has a good theme, it always will. It was a grand, sweeping, beautiful orchestral theme. I loved it, I think it really worked. The rest of the music was fine. I, I don't think it really added too much to what, because there was so much going on already, so much I was interested in that it was just forgettable. I can't say it was bad by any means, but it didn't stand out to me at all. I'm right there with you again. Yeah, okay, <laughs> the, all right. The theme is awesome every time it came on. And I loved how they mixed it up to, they reworked the theme depending on what the theme of the scene was. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But specifically the sound, and I usually don't do this in movies because I'm not a sound guy. I don't, I don't pick it up. But because I was watching subtitles and they gave me sound cues sometimes, this is the only reason why I picked this up. When Lawrence was talking to Prince Faisal for the first time in his tent, Prince Faisal tells everybody to leave. Lawrence stays behind. No music, hardly any other like outside noises whatsoever, other than the creaking of the poles in the tent. Mm. And because it was such an intense conversation, ha! Um, <laughs> That was accidental. It's It was such a pressure-filled conversation. It just felt like that pressure could break at any moment. And the creaking of the poles just accentuated that. I thought that was brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. What's your overall rating out of 10? Let's hear it. It was good. I completely and I totally understand why this movie is considered one of the best movies of all time. I don't think I would put it up in my best movies of all time. But it mm -hmm. was good and does deserve that title. And I did give it an 8.5 out of 10. I almost gave it a 9. I'm like, eh, I can't do that. What did I think about it? Oh, was I, I supposed guess. to ask? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, that's been our review. Everybody take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> I started off thinking this movie was perfect. Oh. You know, like I went into the movie being like, okay, I'm about to watch a perfect movie. So every time I came across a gripe, I was just like, Okay, there's a point. There's a point. There weren't many. <laughs> well, there you go. I gave an 8 out of 10. <laughs> okay. I'm really happy. I genuinely thought, and I still think, and I'll say it now, that a lot of the movies on our list this month are, are not going to be ones that I enjoy. I just, there's something about these old grand epics that I just thought, at least, yeah. don't sit well with me. But this, I am so pleasantly surprised and so happy to have watched this movie. I don't think I'll ever watch it again, to be honest. I think I would, you know, if I ever have, like, a family and kids, I think I would like to share it with them on a movie night. But that's about it. Mm -hmm. I actually thought about that. I'm like, I don't think I will. But there's a situation where I could family movie night where I'm like all right you're 10 now time to oh. watch Lawrence of Arabia <laughs> hey dad why is his face brown but his hands are white <laughs> that's what we thought of Lawrence of Arabia what did you think of Lawrence of Arabia have you seen it are you going to watch it let us know in the comments below we'd love to hear from you let's move on to our top five of the week Ooh, what's our top five this week you want to tell the folks at home what it is yeah i was asking myself out loud top five movies that have a runtime longer than three hours number five hamlet 1996 kenneth branagh i'm a big shakespeare guy always have been always will be and uh that might be the best movie version of any Shakespeare play ever made. Number four, and I know you love when this happens, Lawrence of Arabia. Nice. Number three, King Kong. Oh, I forgot about that movie. King Kong is so much better than people gave it credit for. It is fantastic. I think it actually got a lot of credit. I don't know what I'm talking about, but no one talks Peter about Jackson's, it. Peter Jackson's, right? Yes. It's definitely an underrated movie. Yeah. Number two, this should surprise nobody who knows me, Titanic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Titanic is my comfort movie. Titanic is my happy movie. It is my sad movie. Whenever I'm homesick, whenever I have heartbreak, whatever, Titanic is the cure. That movie is wildly overrated, but okay. I agree. It's yeah. just my comfort movie. It's just what I need sometimes. You oh. love away, man. You love I away. will love away. Thank you. My love will go on. I <laughs> know. Ah, ah, ah. Number one, The Green Mile. It was an easy decision. Was going to be Titanic, but I needed to bring a little bit of actual film critique into this and be a realistic. So <laughs> John yeah. Coffey, sad. <laughs> John Coffey, sad. Sadder now that he's actually dead. Oh, my God. Let's hear yours three and how many we have. We have two in common. My top five movies that are three hours or more. Number five. 
Lawrence of Arabia. Oh! Number four. And I keep telling you to watch this movie and everybody out there should watch this. R-R-R. It's not necessarily better than Lawrence of Arabia, technically, but in my eyes, it was more entertaining and just such a fun ride. Number three, Zack Snyder's Justice I, League. Yeah, I knew that was coming. I'm a huge DC fan. Hell of a movie, especially when you just put it next to what Joss Whedon put out. So <laughs> I think it's one of the best superhero movies ever made. Number dos. The Green Mile. Oh, interesting. I thought we were going to have the same number one. Now I'm very curious, but cool. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> I love Stephen King. It very much almost made number one, but something that I love more than Stephen King also has to do with the king. Number one, The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. That makes sense. Good choice. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, <laughs> would be on a lot of people's top five, and it would probably be my sixth or seventh. That is one of the ones I cut. If you have a top five, or even if you have the one movie that you find is the best three-hour or longer movie, let us know in the comments, please. We'd love to know. Yeah. And that leads us to arguably one of the most important parts of our show. We need to pick what movie is coming next week. Brody, do you have The Hat of Destiny? Oh my god. It just floated up in front of me. <laughs> using my arms but it did crazy i feel this compelling force to just stuff my fist inside of it you kind of sound like alec guinness there oh perfect i meant to we got one what is it? what's it gonna be i'm so nervous all the time yeah it's crazy oh dear me das boot I know nothing about this movie. Das Boot. A German U-boat stalks the frigid waters of the North Atlantic as his young crew experience the sheer terror and claustrophobic life of a submariner in World War II. Whoa, that sounds interesting as fuck. <laughs> it really does. I have a feeling it's going to be very unsettling, like a, like a horror movie without being a horror movie. Yeah. 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 And it is number 78 on the top 100. Yo, the trailer here looks awesome i'm just on imdb and it's just playing as i'm talking but holy moly make sure you watch das boot for next monday we will review it we will be back here talking about it so be here let us know what you thought about it and honestly if you liked what you saw today subscribe to the channel like the video we're gonna keep producing content like this movie content we're shaking things up so uh, we want you along for the ride okay so do it. I just tried to do a martini shaker, but where I was looked like it was just a giant dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait to clip that. Whoops. <laughs> At least my mouth was closed, I think. You did it wrong, then. Oh, sorry. We will see you next time on Same But Different. Thank you for watching. We love you so much. Final words? Double salute. Yeah. Bye. Thy mother mated with a scorpion.